Tonight on RGB, we find out who got got in the news. Then we meet the next celebrity in the hot seat. And we go to the movies with the cast of Kalushi. Welcome to the 30 minutes of gossip. So good, your TV thanks you for tuning in. This is Africa's Gossip Leader, RGB. As always, I'm your host, Fat Joe. Now, yesterday, a lot of crazy and bald people celebrated International Wig Day. And while we get why they celebrated, um, all gossipers know that anything covered up is only fun when it's exposed. Speaking of somebody who loves to expose, I'm joined, as always, by the mistress of Ngozi herself, Shinazo Yogo. Why, thank you, Bajon. The Abuli Sagen Naguni Emakaya, who were wise enough to spend this entire evening gossiping with us. And as my engaged co host said, Moleslano Ibi you wig day. So we might as well celebrate it, Tina, by giving you some news that might snatch yours off. Nangum Goswalevik. Now, uh, Mshosa's relationship with businessman Tutuga Animvula is on again, and reassuringly, she said that she doesn't know how long it will last. Maybe a season, a lifetime, or forever. Let's hope that love, like Mshosa's skin, glows brighter each day. Mroza and Mabala Noise have rubbished the claims that Mabala took Mroza's award money after his Metro win. He says he wasn't swindled and didn't say Mabala Noise was treating him like a baboon. Some people say anything. Uh, next thing, they'll be saying that the Metro Awards were rigged. Hashtag as if. Dr. Malinga is Song of the Year Award. City Facebook and Twitter. Wednesday, the acceptance speech thanking himself and his fans. Ha I win Anjalo E Award first. You join a record label that makes a lot of noise, and then you win the award. Hashtag just saying. Now, Reason broke his silence to shut down the abuses Lady Loot Love is getting on Twitter. According to the facts, that thing Twitter users hate, Reason's relationship ended a year and a half before he hooked up with Loot. If she was a side chick, they were playing a long, long game. And that's the last hair-raising story from this week's news. All right, now our first guest on the seat of superstars has grown from local legend to an internationally recognized actress. She's doing a lot of things. Here to share a little out of her latest role and a lot about her life, RGB is overjoyed. Welcome back, former host and everybody's Women Crush Wednesday international superstar with her winter body, Miss Pearl Tusi. I'm like coming my beauty now. Oh, look at you walking like Let me give you some love. Do I get, I get some love? Oh. How are you? Good, welcome back. We had to change the set after you left, you know? Yeah, I did say I'm not coming back until the set has changed, until things have improved. So I'm what's it like on. to be back? It's been so good. It's been so nice to be back. It's the first time that I'm really actually experiencing everybody's reaction to me moving. Right. So it's been quite refreshing and, and interesting. And what's the reaction been? It's been really great. It's been really good. The media, the people, especially the people, you know, uh, I think I'm excited that people are inspired more than they are proud. You know? Do you feel like, because the one thing I've always said being in this, in, in this market is people always, South Africa is a great country, but it's a small piece of the world. Now you're on a platform that is global. It's like completely different. And it's almost like you're starting from scratch yeah. in the rest of the world. Yeah. But like, what, what, what's your equilibrium like now? Like, what are you like? Is, is, is South Africa becoming smaller or like, where, where are you at? What are you feeling? I've, I've realized how small South Africa is, but I've realized how small the world can also be. But more than that, I've realized that Africa can actually do this thing. That Africa as an entertainment industry can be so much bigger and better than what we think because we're not united and because we don't kind of, I mean, we're enjoying Nigerian music, we're enjoying Nigerian film, but I think we could work a lot more together. I, I, I am, I am. Are you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about it. You guys used to slay me for it. We used it. to totally judge you because, yeah. because yeah. And I'm not even going to go into that. Yeah. But yeah. So for me, I'm really looking forward to try and be a part of the African entertainment industry to a point where it is, doesn't just parallel, but is unparalleled by any other industry around the world. But that can only happen when people become united mm. and interested in their own kind of culture and when artists decide to respect each other and understand their worth. Oftentimes, you have to go away to realize how much is actually at home. Would, yeah. Um, you've just done the Solomon Masangu story. People don't realize that there's a million of these stories that have as yet to be told, that mm. could be told from here. Yeah. Um, in by the West, us. yeah, in the West, their stories have been told over and over and over and over again. Um, what's your what's your take on what we should be doing? I think 
when Africans become more excited to have other Africans tell their own stories. Because the reason people bring, you know, the Denzels and, and the Morgan Freemans to tell our stories is because they know that people will then go and watch to see and judge how the movie went. But as soon as that changes, then we can grow and the scope of African entertainment can really start supporting itself instead of depending on other things or depending on, you know, um, indigenous languages only in order to survive. Career-wise, where are you going? Because you know, you have to make firm decisions, right? Yeah. And yeah. you're like in the middle of, time. yeah, yeah. I'm very excited what the future holds, but also I have to be, I'm still, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm jaded, but I also kind of, I don't hold promises very close to heart. So I'm still trying to make sure that I take care of home. And I think I learned that also from Priyanka. When I, once I was there, I was trying to focus on what's happening there. And she was and like, hey, like no. you must take care of home. she goes back to India all the she time. She makes sure, because at home, if they appreciate and love you, and if you show them love back, then people can respect you for that and they will love that about you. And Anywhere if I'm world, yeah. and if I'm any less African than what I was when I arrived there, then I lose value to them as well because I can't be more American than another American. Mm. So I hold my roots very close to What's up with that accent though? Is that a Zimbabwean accent? No. <laughs> I think I'm, unlike before, I'm can not going to be to explaining us? myself please to give, everybody give us else. The accent, no, please, you're not paying me to be here. Please do the accent. No, 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 no. <laughs> the only thing, the, how, I, how I devise the accent is firstly, Firstly, uh, my character has been there since she was about 14, 15 in right. America. Um, secondly, I have to somehow also change the dialect a bit because the show is created for Americans. Right, right, right. And is their take on a Zimbabwean English American accent no, or what? No, no, no. So basically, what is happening is like I'd say, this is the last time you speak to me like this, yeah. right? In my own way. Yeah. And then the, vo the vocal coach would come and say, uh, do you mind saying last instead of last? Then I'm like, why? Like, no, Charlotte, her name is Charlotte. Yeah. No, Charlotte. That's not how people talk, yeah, right? No. And then Charlotte's like, the thing is, it sounds like lust, like L-U-S-T, in the oh. American audience. Because for them, American audience is the one that's receiving the yeah, show Yeah, let's first. be clear. Yeah, this let's is an American a, show for an <laughs> American audience, and yeah. So then I thought of the things that I, because I had to change accents growing up, because I went to different kind of race schools. You yeah, know that's what I mean? right. You did, you, so you're I'm a very, master of the I'm Indian accent, right? <laughs> yeah, and the Charlotte love. accent. I'm, I'm there, yeah. I'm ready. So then what I did was, the things that I, I I absorbed very quickly was ours together. We are going there, you know, the ers. So I took on that for the accent because naturally she would have taken on that the way, yeah. same way I was. So the accent is a mix of somebody who's grown up there but is not rooted there, if you know gotcha. what I mean. Yeah. 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 Solomon Matlangu, uh, very interesting film. Um, I think you briefly told me about it while you were still here that you were filming it. How did you end up doing that? You know, I used to miss shows, you used to get so mad. And they used did to get you? mad. Yeah, I used to miss shows because I had to drive all the, the way to Pretoria to shoot, yeah. Did I get upset? Yeah, and then you hired other people to try and replace me and break my heart. Mama. Remember that? <laughs> Are we still going there? We will always go there, Are we Joe, always going to go there? Until you say sorry. <laughs> say did sorry. I not say sorry? Say, apologize to me on national television I'm, I'm now. I'm so sorry. You did a love scene in this movie. Yeah, it was really weird for us. Yeah, we were like being friends for so long. But he's, he was just like, no, I just went in and I had I did what I had to do. So he was nervous. He was. <laughs> what was it like for you? Was sure, it your first? Was, oh, yeah, because I was like, it's Prob, dude. Like, let's not <laughs> cross hairs here. Come on. Um, what was it like? Was this your first love scene? No, it wasn't because I was on Isidingo, we did love scenes. Oh, right, I was right, on right. Zone 14, we did love scenes. So you're a veteran, yeah. No, and I'm a very You love helped scene. him to relax. I've actually never done a scene <laughs> which is during the act. It's always before or after. Oh, right. Because they right, need right. to know it's, it's more tasteful. Right. Um, so that's all we've done. And, you know, he was very professional, didn't yeah. make me feel uncomfortable at all. I've been blessed to not have actors make me feel uncomfortable. We're going to cut it off right here, um, but congratulations on everything. I remember you telling me long before, just around the time when you got Nisi Dingo, that act acting is what you wanted to do. And I was like, this girl's not serious. She's not taking the craft seriously. But now the evidence is there, and I'm like, you're clearly taking it seriously. So kudos to you, and I was wrong yet again. And I'd like to say thank you for being always so incredible and supportive of my career. Thank you for being a brother and a friend. And yeah, just. You know there we is. go. Yeah. All right, there you have it, superstar. Now let's cross over to a place where you are likely to see Pearl again. The commercials. You want to do this for old time's sake? Do you miss this? For old time's Imagine, sake. Imagine, Trevor was here, you're here, Yo. I'm here. Yo. What? Well, like, let's go. Yo. Let's we've, go. We've all been touched by the stage. Yeah, the same guy said, we are Kona Matuzan and just about them course when any old time dial. Ningo in da wo. There we go. Hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Coming up. We go to the movies, then we find out what hair will make for a good day. And we remember Solomon Mashangu.
RGB has returned with more of the gossip so fresh. The celebrities concerned are still doing it. As a joke, oh, i movie premieres. You know, it's a shafuna daily. Apagole real good buzzer. Now, here's the latest one we attended the first screening of the Lucky Specials. Real good buzzing out here. Fears out the door. The movie is really about um, a group of cover singers, um, well, a cover band that really um, is aspiring to, to towards a, a dynamic of greatness. More about your character specifically. She's Venda, yay. She's a drama. Manjo's a charming uh, young boy. Um, Raizi is a, is a musician. In the character Silo, Ngempela Ngempela is just a guy who wants to be successful. Yeah. If you could start a band, what would you call your band? Latoya and some other girls, it doesn't matter. Exactly, <laughs> that kind of a thing, you know? What do you think is your disability? Uh, if I could be committed more. I'm all over the show. I am overcritical. What keeps you coming to the cinema? It's all about supporting our story. The exciting South African productions and the African productions that we have. What is the worst thing you've ever done in a cinema? Let's just say, I've been very young. Might also be the best thing I've ever done at the cinema. And they didn't hear or see anything? That's why I said the best thing I've done might have been the worst thing I've done. Of course they saw. You know how I get down. You can't keep quiet when <laughs> rocking. <laughs> what is the one thing you've had to fight for all your life? To be beautiful and to still be respected. Fight to live. Fight to be here. Getting to this day, getting to this night. Why didn't Kanyiso get a blessing? Like, the movie would have been finished in 20 minutes and we would have been home by now. Agreed? Unfortunately, Unganyiso Lungi, Leman. Yes, Nazo, you need a man, yes. I have several. What's your point? They're not short. This is the perfect height. Yeah. Perfect height. The best view. The best views <laughs> are from short guys. <laughs> That's the nice part about being an actor, is to act out of your own character for somebody else's character. He may have a best after for acting, but right there, Mr. Kumeda, the only character you were playing was yourself. He has a joke where it girls is when they get together, the shanga and go back on your new topics that are just too hot to handle. So when we attended Candy in the City with Candy and Co, we asked a few of our famous friends to name them. Different types of eye candy. All the places live in Cape Town. If your place that lives in Joburg, he ain't a bless. He's trying to be blessed too. So yeah, that's why I frequent Cape Town. Cape Town has very, very yummy candy, eye candy. Very, very, very good. Pleasing to the eye. I think about Cape Town and Durban guys, they take care of their bodies more. I could, I stand to be corrected. Who shouldn't be rocking braids? People that have inuele that is uh, thinning. Um, I think as females with my girlfriends, there is no topic that is, you know, or far. Girls are afraid of talking about their dramas with someone. Like, they'll be sitting next to each other, hating the lives out of each other. Let's say, for instance, you put Bonang and like Zinke and they're sitting together in a room. They'll be like taking pictures like, oh yes, this is live. Yes, we're together. And then meanwhile, we're all looking at them like, but. Exes, if you are with a bunch of females and you guys are avoiding certain topics, you need to get a new squad. Do people, do, are they celebrities who have a clean, no makeup look? I am like the perfect girl. We could wipe my face off and I'd still be slaying half these girls here, if not all. Like, all these girls, like Nomuzi ain't next to me without makeup. Mm-hmm, lie. Tell him. I got freckles though, so I'm done with you. <laughs> I would never wear a face mask made out of having so many dirty thoughts right now. I would never wear a face mask made out of human waste, like from the human body. That is just nasty. I actually don't mind any face mask. I don't think there's any face mask that I've ever reacted to, so. Just like Caitlyn Jenner proved before, Crazy K did it again and showed us all that men are the best women. Mm -mm, Joe Ba. Ladies, I know you need a moment to get on social media. Nimkumbuzba urongo kangakanani. RGB will be taking a break. Siabuya ngokmok. After the break, we chat to the lead actor of Kalushi, the story of Solomon Matlangu.
Your home of celebs has returned to weave one final track of gossip into your head for this week. is from one of the most anticipated cinematic treats to come from Lomzanza Sultana Gangaga. Here to share why you should be running to the cinema to buy a ticket to see Kalushi, the story of Solomon Matlango. Hajibi is proud to welcome one of its stars, Tabo Ramit. Malaputi. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a studio audience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Otherwise, Mr. Shail is on. I'm feeling Chan got a Let's say like, uh, no, sure. Welcome, man. Mm. Congratulations on this movie. Is this your first movie? It's my first lead as a movie, but I've done uh, quite a few. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been with I've been with some big Hollywood heavyweights in my time. Oh, have Small you? little roles. Yeah, I've done films with Jeff Bridges, Meryl Streep, Daniel Radcliffe, Bill Paxton, rest in peace. I've been fortunate enough, but no, like small roles, and nobody yeah. really knows about them. Yeah, little damios where just, you just, uh, just in egg. the background uh, and maybe egg. one word and. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to find Easter egg rolls. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so this is your first lead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where well, I get to take reins of control and like sort of influence the narrative a lot. So this was mm. fun. It was so much fun. And you acted along Pearl Tusi as well. Yeah. So you play Solomon Matlango and, and, and Pearl Tusi plays? Brenda Rivera, who's a made up love interest for uh, Solomon Matlango. The reason why a it's made up love interest. It's important we said there was so a girlfriend. So it's not historically correct. No, no, no. There, should. there was a girlfriend, but because his files were so classified and because of the nature of knowing who somebody's girlfriend was, the secret police would come in. Yeah. And she sort of stepped away from everything. So it was hard to get access to her. Story. Okay. So you kind of had to fill in that void. Right. And you helped write the script. So you're one of the writers. Well, what had happened was we got the script and then we wor we reworkshopped it because the, the director loved the script. It was written by Leon Otto and it was amazing, but he just felt like it needed like a voice that, from the kid, from the youth. And we sat down and we literally rewrote the whole thing. And I wrote the last monologue. I rewrote the last monologue and all the narration is by me. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But you were a lawyer first or you were studying law? I was law studying law. You, you didn't even act. Yeah. I was telling you, we found that Trump. No, no, I really wanted to go to as like growing up in a black household where we've been taught survival first, you yeah. know, and I, my parents and I love them to bit, they did so much, they just wanted me to be okay. I think they didn't really think that was gonna be a viable way. To prepare for Le Roga Solomon Matlang Wenzendra. So the first thing we do, and I have to say this, she's in post, I and his brother came as well, Chief Lucas Matlangu, who's actually, his character is portrayed here by oh. money. Uh, he was the chief advisor for the whole thing, so his brother was there for the whole time. Okay. But we spoke at his grave, and then from then on, I literally went to where he was born, and then I went to where he moved then next, and then where, even to where he was hung. So I traveled his spiritual journey and his physical journey as well. And then his files were classified, so we had to go with the family to even get them declassified just so I could learn what scraps I could. And still there, there was a lot of government. You know, about the files are still classified. <laughs> all, and then I'm only declassified because of Kalushi. Yeah. Yeah. 20 and years. 20 years. So what does the man mean to you after having gone through his journey and his story? I think it's critical because I didn't know who he was before I started the project. I knew nothing about this young man. I learned so much about him doing the film. I think it comes from the commercialization of our struggle heroes. Mm. They've only chosen specific ones where the people could profit from them. No one knows anything about this kid, so that's why we could tell the story. Americans didn't know anything about him, so we had the right to tell it our way. Yeah. But uh, learning so much about about this young man and his selfishness and his braveness, but his commanders, all of them say one thing, there's a great respect they had for him and his wisdom, which I'll be honest with you, I, did, I showed him more as the everyday teenager here and not as great as the real man, young man yeah. was, but I think that was owed to the kids from June 16, just to praise all of them at once in one right. performance. Uh, we were talking earlier, obviously, Pearl Tusi's a love interest. Oh, yeah. Well, there were some love scenes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> I was quick. Yeah, of course. What do you think? I wrote him into the script myself. <laughs> huh? I made sure there were three. <laughs> now we have. Um, I mean, in the in the film we've cut it down, but we did have like a quite a beautiful scene, and I just think that the movie lent itself to more an emotional um, level than the physicality. Got you. So we cut it down to be too. Listen, to be man, don't get all serious. This, we're talking about Pearl here. Pearl, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pearl Tixie. Oh, no, no, listen, she's a great actress, and uh, we had to, you know, um, metaphysical. <laughs> nah, she's amazing, dude. Um. The uh, I asked you offset. Yeah. You've got a woman, right? Yeah. Um, I, I always have this debate. That's why I can't act. I wouldn't be able to handle it if my significant other had a love scene, oh, yeah. especially with a hot someone. Oh, yeah. um, on screen, I gotta sit there, stomach it at the premiere, and like act like, yeah, that was great. That was great acting. <laughs> um, for you and, and and your significant other, what was that like? 
You know, I've, I've done them before and I've done it with different, I've done gay scenes on like stage and stuff like that. Are you serious? Yeah, but I, I'll tell you what it is, man. Like, it's a job, dude. And it's, if you're gonna call me out on kissing somebody else, then call me out on like playing Actually, a serial, a serial killer, killer murdering kids yeah. or a, a rapist. If I'm playing those people, call me out on those as well. If but you're dude, gonna choose to believe one reality, believe all of them. Okay, you've done the gay thing. Yeah, yeah. So I've got two questions for you, follow up. Okay. One is, um, we had this situation with uh, uh, Sieven Dalan this week. Huge okay. uproar. What happened? Uh, you don't know. I, I, First gay kiss on the show yeah. ever. Ever? And it, it, it went people. crazy. People yeah. just went nuts. Um, and uh, it turns out that uh, the, the love interest who did the gay scene is actually gay as well. Why do you think people get shocked at being taken out of their comfort zone when they're watching something to take them out of? their comfort zone. Wow. So we have a scene in Kalushi. It's a brief moment of brutal violence. Now we've she's shown that scene everywhere in the world. Sweden, India, Brazil, everyone goes, ah, ah. we showed it in South Africa, they just chilled like nothing <laughs> happened. So it yeah, also- like, where's the coffee? Like, like okay, yeah. and then? Yeah. So the, the thing is, it depends on the cultural setup in the society, okay. man. And you know, in some countries, a gay kiss is nothing. Here, we're still coming to terms with it, even though we did legalize gay marriage, like we were like- A one while of the, ago. A while ago, we were like ahead of the curve. But culturally, I think our people are still developing and, and all There's that. still some actors who struggle with gay yeah, yeah, scenes. A lot, a lot. I, I Why don't you them. struggle? I criticize those actors. I think if you're gonna judge the character, then you shouldn't be acting. Wow. I'm not allowed to judge my character. I can't say he's a good person or a bad person. I'm just here to play him. I'm telling my mm -hmm. story. And if you're gonna say you're not gonna honor someone's story for one aspect of their personality, this is not your job. All right, future uh, for uh, you, Tabu uh, Ramit. Yeah. Uh, what's, what, what's in store? Uh, more movies, I would assume? Definitely. More productions? Mm -hmm. So from now on, I don't even wanna hear calls from my agent. I just wanna create my own content. And if you're calling me, know that I'm taking percentage, brother, like for real. Like I really yeah. want to control content, create content. So that's, movies are coming up. I have my own production company now and that's yeah. what we're going to do. Yeah, that's right, Peter Jackson. So if you're trying to call him, <laughs> uh, you need to know, He's taking bro. one, two percent off the yeah. back and then that's Straight that. Up. Yeah, well, uh, Tabo, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. Really appreciate it, man. Congratulations on the movie. Congratulations on everything that you're doing. We look forward to hearing more stories from you. And go check out the movie, what's it called again? Kalushi, go see Kalushi. It's on the 10th of March. Cinemas all over the country. Fill it up so we can like get more Yeah, go cinema. check out that love scene, man. You know what <laughs> I mean? Now, uh, we didn't mention it, but I would like to take a moment to congratulate Trevor Noah on his Time Magazine cover. Nice to see our greatest export isn't our mineral wealth anymore. On that thread, we have to cut you off for this week. If you've still got some hairs to split with us during the week, Sikangeliko Facebook, Sikona, Official Real Koboza, and on Twitter, at Official RGB. Or you can burn your bundle trying to get our inboxes uh, at The Real Fat Joe, and of course, that's Sinazo Yowo. On that note, good night, and see you next week, guys. Check out his movie.